Welcome back to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. As I continue on with this vision board, I'm going to tackle making some faux stone, brick, and cobblestone. So come on, let's do this. vision board I have two sides of my house happening or one side of my house has the skeleton of a Victorian and the back side is a little bit more of a modern cavern to continue that aesthetic on the front side I want my car porch look like it is a typical carriage house I want to be using a gray colored stone something that would accent really well with the clean lines of the black and natural wood of the house so that's gonna be done on the front side but then over on the back side I want it to look like a covered bridge I have that feeling Feeling like this other world when you're standing in the backyard or in the back area of the house. For the first part of the carriage house, I have mapped out a cardboard piece to apply my faux brick to. And this side of the carriage house, I have singled out where the windows are going to go. So I'm going to have this look like a stone archway, but these will be your typical garage door spacing. I will have a roll away from the inside, more like a gate that you would find in like a retail store, not your typical garage door. In my mind, as I'm living in this house, right because it's the whole point of the vision board I don't think that the garage door is something that's going to be closed regularly I just don't like the idea of having to drive up and open a garage every time you're gonna park your car it's probably gonna remain open most of the times until weather permitting I might need to put down those gates and close off the cars so that when the cars drive through you still get that open view the archway of a stone carport rather than a garage and then it will be a similar thing happening for the back side but this is going to be cladded in wood so this will be looking more like the side of a covered bridge. That being said, I need to make some stone. I also need to make some walkway brick. Anything that would be brick related or look like stone is gonna happen in this video. I have not much of a plan. I did go digging into my boxes of texture and found this guy for some cobblestone-esque type of feel. Not quite sure if I want this on this house. I mean, I don't know, holding it up here, it looks pretty good. Eh, maybe I will. All right, the only problem is that this is already an erased bump, which is what I want this to be. We need to make a reverse mold of this. I have some polymer clay. This is the Michaels brand Craft Smart. It's actually cheaper, it's about a buck 79. It's a quick tip, I threw this in my microwave for about 15 seconds, it softened it up. I'm just gonna take my roller, roll out a thin sheet layer. I wanna stay around an eighth of an inch thick. I don't really care too much about the shape. If you really want to be precise, you can go ahead and try and roll this into a perfect square. We're not going to do that. Then I'm going to take this and press it in and make sure I get a good impression. Before I take that away, I'll go ahead and cut off my extra. Do I have an exacto out here? Of course not. I brought it all inside. It's been like ridiculously cold, like, like 39 degrees yesterday when I went for my walk and I should have been bundled up in a winter freaking coat, but I wasn't. So needless to say, I've been trying to work inside and rather than out here. My son had other plans today. He was itching and itching to get outside, howling up a storm, and here he is just to sleep out here. So, uh, go figure. Not important. So here we go. I'm going to pull this off. Now I can take this, hopefully not distort it much. Uh... Alrighty. I'll throw this on my cookie sheet, and I am going to go ahead and bake this. Uh, you should always read because each brand is a little bit different. The Sculpty brand is 305 degrees for 10 minutes-ish, I think. This stuff is 275 for 15 minutes at a quarter inch thick. This is not a quarter inch thick. This is about an eighth of an inch thick, so probably going to start with 10 minutes and see where it gets me. Let's go ahead and mix up a batch of single stones. I don't have a gray, so I heat up a bit of white, and then I have a bit of the gray from the Craft Smart brand. It's much softer. To get my stone, I'm just mixing up those two colors, and I'm not gonna go crazy because I do want some kind of marbleization happening, but you can see my white is far too dry. Sometimes this happens when you buy those big bricks. All right, I think I'm happy with this, and this technique is going to be ridiculously easy, so I'm just going to be looking at my piece and decide, okay, how big of a stone do I want? Roll some kind of ball, 
shape it into, I think it should be flattened a bit. And then there we go. There's a stone for roundish stones. It's much easier because you can ball it up in your fingers, create a little tiny ball, flatten it out, and boom, you've got a round stone. I would imagine this to be more like a flagstone and it's, it's going to be more like a flagstone. I have no idea why the neighbor's dog just constantly barks all the time nonstop. Anyhow, if I want this to be more squarish, like flagstones, I will take my piece, get a size that I want, and then just tap four sides. And then you have more of a squarish looking stone. That would be a little bit more like your flagstone. Now you're probably asking yourself, why the heck don't I just go buy a bag full of tiny little rocks somewhere, like, you know, the aquarium, or like you know, the floral stuff. You'll have much more control this way where I can create something that does look a little bit more like the flagstone. If I'm making just round pebbly looking things, then it doesn't really matter. I could just go buy that fish stuff and you know, whatever. But if I'm also looking to waste a couple afternoons or a couple nights on the couch doing something like rolling tiny little rocks, then <laughs> I've got a couch craft to go to. Anyway, this is an option. I have my reverse mold ready to go. Take some polymer clay and squish it into where I want it to go. I now have a bunch of textured little stones that can then be placed onto my piece and I'm ready to go. And the thing with polymer clay is it does shrink. So you might have to oversize it a bit so that it can shrink into place. We are going to pour plaster into it and then I can shape and cut the plaster. Okay, I have my cup filled, oh, about here-ish with some water. And I'm gonna start putting my plaster in it. I'm just gonna take bits of my plaster, shaking it into my cup. You wanna keep Keep adding powder until a little mountain forms at the top of the surface and it no longer wants to dissolve. See that mountain forming and it's still dissolving, dissolving, dissolving. So I'm just gonna let this harden and this mold can be used over and over and over again. I have a pack of bamboo sticks and before my plaster sets, I'm taking some polymer clay and I've snapped off the end of this bamboo stick so that you can see the textured bits. It is a little bit larger than I want it to be. So I'm gonna just go ahead and cut a sliver off. So this is gonna have this point. You could do this with the chopstick also. And what I'm gonna do is press into my clay and I have a small impression there and I'm gonna make a couple of those different sizes, really trying to keep the texture of the end. And this is unbaked polymer clay. I'm gonna be pouring into the unbaked clay. I got a bunch of little pressings there. Take some bits of that plaster. The back end of a wooden toothpick probably would work for this technique too. Give it a bang. You don't wanna have any air bubbles. You want it to really flatten out. Another completely different option. Basically today is a giant experiment. I have ideas kicking around in my head for different techniques and I'm just playing with those techniques to see what gives me the best result in the end. Moving away from clay, another inexpensive option is to use some floral foam. You can get this stuff at the 99 cent store and you can just go ahead and cut it into the shapes that you want. It is designed to absorb water so you want to be careful when you do your painting super easy to turn into the shapes that you want it to be whether you're doing brick or any kind of stone you can even sand this stuff down let's have a go applying this the great thing about the floral foam is that it's lightweight and you have whatever rock shape or whatever you want to go ahead and do now one of the things you can use is cement. Let's do a driveway pathway out of the cement. Sorry, concrete brick cement. Cement. Probably cement. Here we go again. Cement versus concrete. In the case of the crafting, I use cement because I do not need anything thick and hardy. If you are using some big stone that is structural and you're trying to replicate that, then you probably want to use concrete and not cement. But for the crafting purposes, you can go ahead and use your cement and they do make these dyed colors to mix in. Okay, so I have some cardboard and then I have cut two strips of cardboard, making sure that my corrugation is running this way. I'm gonna make a curved walkway kind of curve drive. To get my curve, I'm just going to be cutting some slits along the cardboard. Now I'm not cutting all the way through, I'm just scoring where I'm cutting through that first layer of paper.
the scoring so I can flex this piece any way, which way I need to. I'm gonna apply some tape to the inside of each one. And I'm using clear packing tape. The clear packing tape will not stick to the cement. I'm gonna take my scissors and burnish the tape on, rubbing it down on there. So you'll start to see the change of color on the tape where it'll really attach itself to the cardboard. If you don't do this, then the tape won't really stick well. I'm taping one side that I have cut the lines on on the inside and one side that where the, you know what I'm saying, one of each side. I have not had lunch yet and so my brain is not functioning 100% at the moment. I've got my hot glue gun ready to go. I'm gonna glue down the raw edge, not the taped edge. Ah, before I do that. Yes, y'all, I finally caved and bought a cordless glue gun that is a full-sized one. I'm just giving this a curve and I'm gonna hold it here. Curved for a second. You can go in and reinforce. Now I'm gonna try and follow the same curve line. And of course they taped the wrong freaking side. Oh well. If you're trying to be precise, I would recommend sketching the line. It didn't quite harden yet, being impatient. Sketch the line on the cardboard for the pathway that you want it to be. Since this is just for demo purposes, it doesn't really matter. This is probably not gonna end up in my model. Come on, harden already. So I have two sides on. I am gonna need to cap this off before I can get going with my pouring. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that taken care of as soon as this sets up. I have done a really good job, ha, I hope, gluing up all my edges to make sure I don't bust a leak. And then this is my form right now. I have a cup of water and an empty cup to do my mixing in. This is the reverse of the plaster where I started with the water. I'm gonna start with the powder and slowly add the water to the powder. I do not need a lot. I don't want a really thick piece, maybe about a quarter of an inch-ish. It's gonna be mounted on the wall. Probably should be wearing a mask. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, safety first, people. I'm gonna fill this one with powder, and then I'm gonna slowly add the water as I'm mixing it into it, and I'm looking for a really thick yogurt consistency. This is gonna pretty much be it for me today in this work session. The rest of those items that I have made earlier, as well as this piece, is going to need to cure overnight. My days have been really cold. It's too cold for these things to set up as quickly. If it was a hot summer day, I would be able to kick through these very fast, probably be it four or five castings in a day, but such is life, this is what I'm working with today. I can't really tell, but I think it's level. I would recommend drawing a line inside of your mold so that you can make sure that it's even thickness all the way around. You know, decide what thickness you want it to be and then pour to that line so you can figure out the leveling. Um, as this is just a demo, it doesn't really matter, so get the air bubbles up and we're gonna let this set overnight. Wow, well, hope you could understand what the heck I just said. It's been a couple days and these things I think are finally ready to come out of the molds. Probably were ready the other day, but I got busy so here we are. Let's go for this one first. Plaster. Very carefully. Oh, it's not too bad. Pretty decent texture. This could work as a walkway. I can show you how easy it is to deal with sanding up plaster. And the bottom is a little bit uneven, so I'm gonna just start off by scraping. If you have a shore form, also known as a RAS, you can get these for a couple bucks at Home Depot and it, it looks like a cheese grater. Hey, Mama. Still loving her house. Let's say I wanted to fit along this section. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give myself a straight edge. I'm gonna take this again. And I'm just gonna eyeball straight, but you could most certainly take a ruler, straight edge, something, draw yourself a line to follow. I am in a well-ventilated area. I do not have a mask on. You probably should be working with a mask on, especially if this plaster is old. The wetter it is, the less likely you're going to be picking up too much dust. So let's take out some of this middle junk. Let's see if I can successfully do this without cracking the dang thing. Rather than trying to cut into it and, you know, cut around that, I'm going to do some scooping action away from your finger. Hey, 
Anyhow, I think you get the idea. These are the little ones that I thought I was gonna like more. I don't know, we'll see what happens here. These look a little more like flagstone. I believe that focuses. You can see a tiny little bits of detail there and once it's painted, it's gonna look a lot like a flagstone rather than a cobble work. Let's take a look at the cement pathway. like it. It's a bit wonky here, but maybe I just use it. wasn't planning on using it, but it's a nice little walkway. Maybe up through my English garden. I don't know. I should probably just use it. What the heck? I'm digging this. I'm gonna sand this up and the piece that I was originally not gonna use and I just did as a tester, I think I should totally find a way to use it. See if this actually works with the sure form. Well, looky that. Glorious! Cool. All right, I am totally happy with that. I'm gonna use this to be the front walk up through the English garden, because I made it, so why not? I made some templates, the parts that I need to cast, and I wrote the word face on them so I can make sure that I know which sides are supposed to be what. So I'm gonna roll out a clay slab, press this texture into it, then cut this shape out of it using it as a template, erect some walls out of cardboard so that I can pour the plaster into that section. I am using porcelain. Porcelain has the least amount of grog in it, so it's going to be cleaner. I'm gonna be able to pick up much more texture. I don't want to mess up any of that stone texture I got going on. I think this section looks the best. Um, I'm gonna do a better job of rolling the next one, so I'm just gonna use the square one. For the roof of my covered bridge, I found at a hobby store. It's a plastic piece that has a texture that looks like roofing, and you can just go ahead and apply it on and paint it up. It did come in a tool pack. I don't normally just apply these items directly to my piece. I usually use them as a mold or to pick up texture. I will keep one around to do that with, but since this is such a small piece and I will only need one of the sheets to keep, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this sheet as is. I will use some acrylic paint and get it on here once I have attached the rest of the siding and whatnot. For the wood siding, I am using these pieces of basswood. It's sold at a hobby shop for model making. I'm gonna be making this backside look like a specific covered bridge in New Hampshire. The bridge has a little bit of an open area where there's like some open crisscrossing. These bottom columns are gonna look like a solid wood beam. The side claddings that will be running along here is cedar. Because this is soft, I can go right in with a wire brush you can get at the 99 cent store and I just get them for texturing my clay and for things like this. And this is the brush you find to clean your grill. Maybe you have to go to the Dollar Tree now. Since the pandemic, the 99 has decided to do a restructuring. It resembles more like a Big Lots and less like the 99 cent store. The deals are not nearly as good as it used to be. They jacked up the price to everything and the quality didn't get better. So anyhow, my gripe with the 99. I'm gonna take this wire brush and I am just going to put some pressure and scrape away. And you may not even see the results of this until you get some paint on. You can use a very dull pocket knife to do some scraping into. Try and not go too crazy on these smaller pieces. I'm just gonna grab the X-Acto knife. I'm coming in at an angle. In this case, you probably want a really sharp X-Acto knife. 
photo at the moment. So I've got nothing but a cat's behind on my workstation. I gave the barn, barn, why do I want to keep calling it a barn? The carriage house slash bridge, a coat of black paint. My next move is to first glue on the bits that broke off and then I'm going to be painting all of this plaster, fitting it and painting it all at the same time. And I'm probably not going to do much commentary. I'm just going to shoot some footage of me going ahead and going through those stages. I will also be completing and applying the weathered board. y'all my garage is complete i'm pretty happy with the way it turned out if you are enjoying my waffling on endless jabbering on meaningless nothings while i attempt to make things please hit that subscribe button if you are not subscribed already and stick around to watch this envision board come together